More than 60 years after he was selected, but ultimately passed over to become this country's first black astronaut, Ed Dwight finally made it to space. On Sunday, he flew aboard Blue Origin's New Shepard 25 rocket as it skimmed space on a roughly 10-minute flight. Ed Dwight was an Air Force pilot when then-President John F. Kennedy championed him as a candidate for NASA's early astronaut corps. But his plans for space travel were sidelined, and he was never granted the opportunity due to racism within the program. Dwight left the Air Force and went on to make a name for himself as a celebrated artist and sculptor. With Sunday's flight, he makes history as the oldest person to ever go to space at age 90. I spoke with Ed Dwight earlier, and I asked him about his history-making flight. I was more interested in uh, the, uh, the, you know, the power uh, and, the, and the noise uh, and, and the lifting going straight up in the air instead of, of, of flying an airplane from <laughs> you know, from a runway or something, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and it, was, it, was, it was quite fast. Uh, and, and we got up to uh, 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 the speed, uh, you know, uh, uh, fairly quickly. The getting in the space part was, was, was more interesting to me than anything else. The weightlessness, I, had, uh, I lived in a world of weightlessness, so that didn't bother me. I never got out of my, uh, out of my seat, you know, we were laying down in the capsule, so I never got out of my seat. There was a, a big 10-foot-tall window that was next to me, and I was more fascinated with, with what was going on outside than what was going on inside. Uh, well, when we did get uh, uh, a zero G, uh, the the other members of the crew, they, they had uh, designed a, a dance. These are all grown men now, uh, designing a dance that they're a, a, a ballerina dance that they were going to do during the weightless, weightless. So, so I kind of watched them a little bit. But again, I spent all all my time looking outside. The thing that that, that kind of shocked me a little bit um, was the separation because the you know they have explosive bolts uh, that you know to hold the capsule to to, to the booster, uh, and it was extremely loud, and it felt like we ran into something, and and I was confidently sure that we were destined to fall to earth. Well, did you feel a sense of vindication? Did you feel any semblance of, of justice, especially given the way that you were denied the opportunity to go to space some 60 years ago, despite being eminently qualified and being tapped by then President John F. Kennedy? Right. Uh, well, you know, people, um, that's a big question that they ask, you know. And for, and for 60 years, uh, I, I, you know, I actually told myself that, oh, hell, I didn't need that, you know, <laughs> uh, be, because I'm an action soldier and I'm always going out and doing things positive uh, and doing big projects and having a good time at it, you know. And so I, I didn't have a lot of time to think uh, about being angry or, or, uh, or, or sorrowful or anything of the sort. Uh, because I had to take a look at the job that was my job at 60 years ago, uh, and 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 my if you look at it philosophically, my job was to start a conversation uh, about blacks in space, and you know that was my job. But then again, as I got closer and closer to it, uh, especially in the last few days, uh, I I I got to thinking about it. <laughs> Uh, and I said, well, this thing is really going to happen here. <laughs> you know, it took 20 years for, for, you know, for them to come around to that. But, but here I was, uh, uh, you know, I was making art for NASA. Uh, and they were flying my sculptures into space. Uh, they were naming asteroids after me. And I knew uh, all the, uh, the uh, black astronauts really, really well because we were all buddies. And, you know, we had, we had a club and, we, uh, you know, and... And we, and we call ourselves the Afronauts. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you about that, because when you returned to Earth on Sunday, you were greeted by NASA astronauts, space shuttle veterans, Leland Melvin, right. Charlie Bolden, right. and Bernard Harris. And right. from where I sit, their success is directly linked to your experience, to your sacrifice. Do you see it that way? Oh, of course I do, because they tell me that every time we talk, I mean, you know, what if you had, we wouldn't be doing this, uh, you know, and, and, and it was kind of an accepted uh, kind of 
uh, you know, relationship that we had. And, and so they just considered me one of them that just hadn't grown up. So I've, I've been close to the program and I've been, you know, close. I've got a, a, a you know, big display at, uh, at the, in the Pentagon and, I, and I've been recognized, all, you know, all these years. Uh, and, you know, and nobody has just like I was isolated and living on another planet or anything. Uh, you know, and every, every one of these guys considered me a part of it. So uh, that, I mean, that part was good. So it all came together at the tail end of the thing last Sunday. So, Mr. Dwight, congratulations on your history-making flight, and thanks so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Well, thank you very, very much for having me. I, I, I enjoyed it.